Hi, I'm Drew. I'm going to be doing your walkthrough today. Uh, we're going to start right up front here. Uh, we have a six inch radio antenna here. Um, next to that, we have a vented battery box. Uh, since battery is in a sealed box, uh, it does need to vent to the outside. This is where that is located. Uh, right beside that, we have your 30 amp, 110 volt power supply here. Uh, only plugs into the unit one way. Uh, if you look at that plug, it is only going to be accommodated one way. Uh, once you plug it in, it'll be a slight turn to the right that locks it in. Then you do have this secondary collar here to screw down and lock it in further. Uh, right next to that, uh, we have a standard RG6 cable fitting. Uh, this, this, this is designed for uh, any park cable service, aftermarket satellite package, and it is just a, a standard cable fitting that passes through to the designated TV area of the camper. Uh, right next to that, uh, we do have a standard solar plug. Uh, this is designed for any portable solar panels. Uh, will be a, a, a direct plug and play connection. This is a, a direct connection to the battery. Uh, one thing to keep in mind there with this is uh, here off of the battery there is an inline fuse. Uh, so if you do lose uh, connectability here, uh, the only thing that it truly could be would be this 15 amp fuse there. Uh, coming down into this battery compartment, uh, there is going to be a fair amount of maintenance to do with that uh, lead acid battery. Uh, what you're going to do is pull these two vent panels up uh, two or three times a year. Uh, there is a clear marked water level in there and you will maintain that water level with distilled water. Um, other than that, again, uh, this other inline fuse is uh, your main 12 volt power. So. If you lose that, uh, that's a good place to start looking. Uh, also in this compartment here, we have your battery disconnect switch. Uh, this is designed to be used anytime uh, you are storing the unit for more than seven days. Uh, you will go ahead and, and manually move that switch into the off position. Uh, what that's gonna do is isolate this battery from any nominal or phantom draws, backlit displays, things like that. Uh, does accomplish the very same thing as physically disconnecting these battery terminals. Uh, access to the battery uh, will be uh, limited by this battery cover here. Uh, four screws in the corner, just undo those screws. Uh, you will have access to that battery. Um, down low here, uh, we have your tires and your lug nuts, it is very important to remain a certain tire pressure as well as torque on those lug nuts. Uh, these tires are rated for a max uh, inflation of 50 PSI, uh, and you do wanna run tire pressures at the max. So you don't, you don't run them 10 or five or 10 pounds under that max tire pressure rating. Uh, that number is stamped in the sidewall of the tire as well as on this uh, tire rating tag here. Uh, also very important is going to be lug nut torque. Uh, manufacturer recommends a retorque procedure. Uh, the first 10, 25, 50, and 100 miles of initial travel, they want you to retorque those lug nuts back down to 100 foot pounds. So very important to maintain that uh, lug nut torque. Uh, also we have stabilizer jacks on all four corners uh, of the unit. Uh, these stabilizer jacks are designed to stabilize the unit. Uh, they are not for leveling. So you will use this crank handle here, slip it over that stud, and on the way down, you'd come down, make contact with the pavement, maybe a quarter turn more just to sure everything up. Uh, same on the way up, you don't need to go overly tight in either direction. Uh, and again, they are just for stabilization. If you're doing any leveling front to back, you're gonna use the main tongue jack here. Left to right, you'll use the tires in your, your choice of leveling kits. Uh, moving around here to the back side. Uh, nothing too crazy to speak of back here. Um, you do have a back porch light, which is going to be this double or this third brake light up top. 
Uh, again, pulls double duty as a porch light as well as your brake light. Uh, other than that, switches here on this backside panel uh, is just going to be a main ceiling light as well. Um, other than that, we're going to momentarily lift up this door. Uh, you do have an auxiliary receiver down here. Uh, it is very important, uh, as the sticker says, to keep that at 100 pounds max, uh, whether that be for a cargo carrier, a bag rack, uh, whichever you choose. Just make sure it's under 100 pounds. Coming around here uh, to the outside kitchen area, The, your cook stove uh, is not only designed to run off of one pound Coleman style bottles, uh, you can also use a standard 20 pound propane tank uh, as well, utilizing your secondary hose here and reducer. So if you are using this uh, with a 20 pound propane tank, you would go ahead and screw your hose right there onto that coupler. And then of course this goes straight to the tank. Now, if you're using the Coleman one pound bottles, you will want to disconnect this reducer um, from the rest of this hose. And then of course, go ahead and screw that on there. Uh, tabletop here will lift off. And can be installed up front here on the unit. Um, of course, kind of usual suspects here when it comes to storage. Uh, we do have the Dometic 12, 12 volt cooler fridge here. Uh, this is a 12 volt appliance. Uh, it does have Bluetooth connectability. Uh, really can be set anywhere on that temperature spectrum from zero degrees uh, all the way up to your designated temperature. Uh, can be used as a standalone freezer fridge freezer combo or just a fridge. Um, setting your temperature, of course, the real time temperature is going to display on the display. If you hit that set button once, that's going to display the set temperature. Plus or minus here will allow you to choose a temperature. So very simple there. Uh, when it comes to closing the outside kitchen, uh, of course, you want to make sure everything is buckled in and in place. You have the release bar here, uh, so you lift that up and that will allow you to close that there. Uh, light up top here, switches right there on the fixture. Uh, nothing too crazy with that. Uh, we do have some standard all weather 110 volt outlets here as well. Uh, and these are GFI protected. Your main reset switch is gonna be on the inside. Uh, coming inside the unit, uh, right onto the inside of the door, we have the three panel light switches here. Uh, one is of course going to be the main ceiling lights. This one is going to be the cabinet backlighting. You have a blue light uh, there uh, or a bright white LED. So it is a three way switch. Uh, this light here is going to be for the porch light um, towards the rear of the outside. So the front one is individually switched right there on the fixture. This one is auxiliary switched on the panel. Um, right here we have your remote for your Max Air fan. Uh, a couple ways of operating this. Um, uh, of course you have your on off switch here. Uh, the up or down arrows on this are going to choose a designated fan speed and those go in 10% increments there. Um, left or right is going to be setting an actual thermostat. So you can not only control the speed of the fan, uh, but the temperature there with this remote. Uh, direction is going to be reversed here with this button in the uh, lower right hand corner. Uh, this will close the lid. You can run that fan with the lid closed if you just want to circulate the air here on the inside. Uh, and then of course you have your on off button there up in the, the left hand corner. Uh, 
Uh, up front here of the unit, uh, we have your uh, 12 volt cigarette lighter style receptacle. You can use that for any 12 volt appliance. Um, above that, uh, a couple USBs. Uh, those are 12 volt, uh, both are 12 volt. Uh, use it to charge your phones, whatever. Uh, main GFI outlet, which was referenced there on the outside. All these outlets in this unit are on the same uh, circuit. If one of them gets overloaded, they all do. Uh, that would be the, the reset point to restore function. Uh, coming down here, uh, we have your fuse panel breaker box uh, here. Uh, everything on the left side is going to be for 110 volt appliances. Uh, you do have those standard light switch style flip breakers, uh, which you would probably find at your house. Uh, on the right, we have your uh, automotive blade style fuses. Uh, of course, not a bad idea to pick up a variety pack of fuses, keep them with the unit uh, in the event that one would go out. Uh, in terms of function, everything is labeled on the uh, door uh, for what fuses control which appliances. Uh, head unit stereo here uh, you have access to AM FM radio and Bluetooth of course you have auxiliary input uh, as well uh, turning it on is here uh, and then of course you choose your mode here uh, and then you can change channels there uh, if you're doing Bluetooth uh, just go ahead and hold this button uh, in the on position uh, and do a search uh, will allow you to go ahead and, and connect via Bluetooth with that. Uh, long hold there on that off button to put it into standby mode. Uh, what we have here is going to be the other side of that RG6 cable fitting we saw on the outside. Uh, that is the termination of that pass-through connection. Uh, up top here we have your carbon monoxide uh, smoke alarm it does run on a 9 volt battery will let you know when it needs to be changed just like your smoke alarm at home uh, test button there uh, of course manufacturer recommends giving that a test uh, every time you take the unit out uh, as well as uh, testing your your fire extinguisher here uh, to do that with this uh, there is a green tab on top if you go ahead and you push that tab down and it springs back uh, that, mean there, that means there is still pressure in the unit. Uh, if it stays depressed, it is time to replace. Uh, air conditioner here uh, is equipped with a heat strip as well. Uh, dependent on which way you're going, here on the, uh, I guess, right side of the, of the dial here, uh, the gray is just going to be standalone fan, uh, no conditioned air, no compressor. Uh, on the left side, which is blue, is actually going to be uh, conditioned air. So you have a low, you have a low, a medium, and high fan speeds. So you can really choose where you directionalize the air uh, with the louvers here on the side. Uh, if you want that air to come straight down, you can, of course, uh, use the louvers there. Uh, if we are actuating the heat strip, we're going to go one over from the off position towards the left. Uh, to this optional heat indicator, uh, then we do need to turn this thermostat onto the hot side of things. Uh, it takes just a few minutes for you to start producing heat from there on after. Uh, it does have a washable filter here. Uh, stick a flat bladed screwdriver in there uh, and lightly pry this cover off. Uh, you'll see a little netted washable filter. Um, should stay in relatively good uh, condition. Uh, other than that uh, is just the, the shutdown of the, the unit, the tip out bed and the rear hatch here. Uh, you would want to start by zipping all of this up and making sure everything is in a ready to be packed away. And also, so 
you don't want your mattress to end up on the floor when you shut the room, uh, you will want to zip this up as well. So that's a good start here. Uh, give yourself a room. You do give, give yourself some room. You do need to remove this bar. Uh, this bar, uh, when it is brand new, is is very tight, uh, and that's a good thing. Uh, of course, you can only anticipate that this fabric is going to stretch slightly, uh, and will get loose over time. So if you have to struggle with it at first, uh, that is definitely normal. Uh, so you push the detent in here. Uh, and again, as best you can, kind of work that loose. Uh, and we'll unzip this here so you can see what's happening there with the outside. Uh, this comes down here, and this is held on by a clip. So we pull that right off. Uh, while we have this zipped up here, uh, it creates a nice little pocket for that to rest there on the inside. Uh, from there, we're going to finish zipping this up. And then we'll hop on to the outside for now. Might have to take it off. That's fine for now. So uh, from there, we will uh, make sure that this bottom piece is nice and folded up. And we're going to do our best to kind of keep things out of the way while we are folding this in. Uh, of course this motion is a lot easier if you have a friend to help you uh, but it is very easy to do if it is by yourself. So what I do is I just go ahead and I kind of start in this half lifted position. I will tuck everything in on the one side uh, and then as best as I can I walk over here to the other side and I may bounce back and forth a couple times. Uh, of course the last thing I want to do uh, is pinch any of this fabric uh, there into the door. So once I am fairly confident that everything is out of the way, I can come here and use that handle to go ahead and shut everything down. Uh, very similar here on the back side with this rear hatch. Uh, except for there is nothing to tuck, of course. Uh, so we just lift up and close it down there. And of course, we want to make sure everything is locked up and stowed away before going down the road. Uh, when it comes to hooking up to your vehicle, uh, of course, you are going to uh, start up uh, with your coupler here about three inches above the height of your uh, stinger and ball. Uh, you are going to center yourself underneath the coupler as best you can. Uh, you do have a little bit of flexibility. Uh, this wheel does provide you a, a small amount of motion. Uh, once you are centered underneath the coupler you're going to rotate the jack uh, to lower it down on top of the coupler. Uh, once you are fully seated on the coupler, you will go ahead and lock this back. Uh, you do want to pay special attention that you are engaging that clip uh, and, and that it is fully seated there. Uh, you can also from there go ahead and lock this. Uh, that's going to give you a kind of a, a added protection, uh, keep this from potentially uh, wiggling loose, um, although unlikely it could happen. Uh, from there, uh, you can go ahead and cross your chains underneath the coupler here. Uh, should look something like that uh, on the tow chain hooks of your vehicle. Uh, emergency breakaway cord here, uh, which is essentially your last line of defense. So if your coupler were to fail here, 
uh, and your tow chain hooks failed as well. Uh, as the two vehicles separated, this is going to act like a rip cord to the electric brake system, uh, immediately locking up that 12 volt brake system. Uh, this needs to be connected to your uh, receiver tow chain hooks uh, with a third connection point. So you need three connection points, uh, two for the tow chain hooks, one for the emergency breakaway. Of course, your seven way cord here uh, plugs into the bumper receptacle. Uh, this is going to give you full function to uh, your vehicle's uh, lights, braking system, and charging system as well. Uh, that basically wraps it up. If you do have any other questions, feel free to uh, reach out to us. Uh, we should be able to walk you through anything else that you may have questions through over the phone. Thank you very much.